Let's take a look at how we can create classes and instantiate objects in Python. We are going to see that classes help us group attributes and methods together in a logical and reusable way. One way to think about classes and objects is that classes provide a blueprint for creating individual objects. The best way to explain all of this is by looking at an example. So let's take a look at the following one. Let's assume that we're creating an application to help a public university manage its students. So let's start simple and create the class student. At the moment, this class is not going to do anything, which is why we're going to write the keyword pass underneath. As I mentioned earlier, classes are blueprints for objects. So now that we have a blueprint, how about we create an object? To create our very first object, all we need to do is write a variable name, such as student underscore one, and set it equal to student. And what we're going to do below that is quite simply print out the student underscore one. If I go ahead and execute this, you will see in the console output that it says that I've created a student object. And besides that, it will also give you the memory location of where this object is saved. You can, of course, create more than one student by instantiating a new object under a new variable name. So you could, for example, write student underscore two equals student. And as before, I can also find the storage location and memory of the second student by printing out student underscore two. And if we execute this, you will now also see the storage location of student two. But let's leave the second student away for the moment and let's create some attributes for the first student, such as a first name and a last name. One way to do this would be to write out student underscore one dot first name and then set it equal to the value of the first name, which could, for example, be max. We can create the last name in similar fashion by writing student underscore one dot last name is equal to Griffin. To see that we've correctly assigned these attributes to the student, all we need to do is go to our print statement and write student underscore one dot first name. And then we're going to copy this print statement a second time and write student underscore one dot last name. Once we execute these two print statements, you will see that we have retrieved the attributes that we have assigned just a moment ago. But this method of assigning attributes to an object is quite cumbersome. Another more simpler way is to use a constructor in the class. So let's get rid of the pass statement within the student class and define an init method. And you will see that whenever I create a method within the student class, the self parameter is going to be added by default. And for those of you who are now wondering what the self parameter is, it is quite simply an instance of the student class. So a specific student. Since a lot of people have problems understanding self, let's really try to grasp this concept. I'm going to add a print statement within the init function. And all it's going to do is it's going to print self. Below that, I still have the student one from earlier, which is an instance of the class student. So now when I go ahead and execute the selected code, I'm going to be creating an instance of the class student. And since the init method runs whenever an instance of the class is made, it is going to run the print statement inside of it. And in the console output, you will see a result that is similar to the one that we had earlier in this video, where we saw that we created a student object and we also have a memory location. So as you can see here, when I print out self, all I get is the instance of the class student, which is a specific student. And in this case, it's the student number one. So now if I want to go ahead and add the attributes first name and last name, I can simply write self dot first name equals max and self dot last name equals Griffin in the init method of the student class. To see that these attributes have been assigned to the student one, all I need to do is write a print statement. And within the print statement, I'm going to write student underscore one dot first name. And within another print statement, I'm going to write student underscore one dot last name. Now, if I go ahead and execute all of this, you will see in the console output, I get the first and last name that we assigned to the student. The problem that I have now is that whenever I create a student, the first name will always be Max and the last name will always be Griffin. So it would be helpful if we could pass the first name and the last name into the init method as a parameter. To do that, I'm going to add the parameters first and last to the init method. And I'm going to assign the first to the first name 
and the last to the last name. And in the line below that, where I'm creating the instance of the student class, I now need to pass in two positional arguments, one for the first name and one for the last name. As the first name, let's just choose John, and as the last name, we'll choose Dear. To access these attributes, all I need to do is write two print statements. I'm going to use student underscore one, and then dot first name, and in the subsequent print statement, I'm going to write student underscore one dot last name, and in the console output, after I execute this, you will see that we get the name John Deere. Now that we know how to add attributes to an object using the init method, which is called whenever an instance of an object is made, I want to take a look at a new class method. Let's assume that at the university there are a lot of students, and it can occur that a student decides to pick a new major. So we want to add a function to the student class that allows the administrative staff to make this change in the system. First off, we're going to go back into the init method and we're going to create a new parameter called major. And we're going to write self.major is equal to major. So now when we create an individual student using the student class, we also need to pass in the major that he's currently pursuing. For the example below, let's just say that John Deere is studying computer science. Now let's create the function that allows us to make changes to this major. We're going to define the function change major, and as an argument, it is going to take the instance of the object, as well as the new major to which the student has switched to. All this function is going to do is it's going to make the change in the major, and in addition to that, it is also going to print out the first name of the student, the last name of the student, and the new major to which he has switched to. So let's now go ahead and call this function on the student John Deere and change his major from computer science to mechanical engineering. To do that, all we need to do is write student underscore one dot and then the name of the function, which is change major. And as an argument, we're passing in the new major, which is mechanical engineering. Once I execute the code that I have just highlighted over here, you will see that the major will be changed to mechanical engineering and the print statement will be printed saying that John Deere has switched to mechanical engineering. And the amazing thing about classes is that we can create as many students as we want and we can call the functions within the student class on each of the individual students that we create. So there is absolutely no problem with creating a student underscore two setting it equal to a new instance of the class student by writing student bracket open and then let's call him Peter Oliver and give him the major mechanical engineering. And as before, we can also proceed to access one of these attributes by, for example, printing out the student underscore two dot major. And in the console output, you'll see that student two's major is mechanical engineering. And we can also choose to run the function change major on this new student because he is also an instance of the student class. So let's simply write out student underscore two dot change major and let's change his major to biology. In the console output, you will now see that this student has changed his major to biology. So as you can see, we can create multiple students and we can also run the functions within the student class on each of these individual students.